From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Kit Kats in Japan and the US. This is what works. In Japan, our Kit Kats come in four sizes big little pouch bite, minis, and bar. And classy one, sublime. So one thing to note here regarding mini sizes, the regular Kit Kat is 11.6 grams, but the flavored minis, such as matcha, are said to be slightly smaller, 11.3 grams. So I'm gonna weigh them now to confirm. So let's weigh a regular flavored Kit Kat first. It weighs 11 grams, but it doesn't show the decimal points. It says just 11 grams. Let's weigh matcha flavor. 12. It's actually heavier than regular flavor. Interesting. Japanese Kit Kats have become popular all around the world, and the US, of course, is no exception. I just want to mention the top here, we're going to be talking about Kit Kats that are native to our countries. I know you can get them online. I think Walmart.com has some of them. Fantastic. They're imported. We know. Thank you. In the US, our Kit Kats come in nine sizes. Starting from the smallest, we have a Kit Kat Minis Unwrapped. Then the Thins, Miniatures, Snack Size, Standard Four Finger, The Big Cat. From there, we move up to King Size, which is a piece accidentally broke off and then I accidentally ate it. The Big Cat King Size, which looks like just be two big cats. And the biggest size, the XL. A bag of Kit Kat bites should have 11 bites. Let's count in Japanese. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 11 bites. And according to the bag, the combined weight should be 50 grams. So let's weigh all 11 bites. Ooh, it weighs 52 grams. Good deal. All of our US sizes come in a variety of units depending on your Kit Kat needs. So many varieties. Here's a few worth mentioning. The minis, the biggest bag of minis unwrapped you can get is 419 grams. As the title implies, these things are unwrapped little bites. It's sold like it's for sharing, but get real. Whoever sticks their hand in here first, it's their bag. For the miniatures, according to Amazon, you can get up to four pound bags, AKA 1,814.37 grams. And what it looks like, they just sent me a bag that's loosely four pounds of Kit Kat minis. All the bars have their various packs. None of them seem unusual. I will, however, mention that the biggest single purchase of a Kit Kat item you can get is the king size 24 pack. The total here is 2,040 grams, about 4.5 pounds of Kit Kat. Here's all the Kit Kats exclusive to the US. And here is all the Kit Kats native to Japan. Kit Kat in Japan is made by Nestle and is one of the best selling candies in the country. One of the reasons for its popularity is that Kit Kat has a good luck charm in Japan because the name Kit Kat in Japanese is Kitto Katto. And Kitto Katto sounds like Kitto Katsu, which means you will surely win. So the Kit Kat brand became associated with good luck. And these Kit Kats are often given to students before their exams. For the past 20 years, Kit Kat has introduced more than 350 unique flavors. Wow! Some of them are discontinued, unfortunately, and some of them are regional. So we could get them by the filming of this episode. Gomenne. So here are a few standard Kit Kat flavors in Japan. Coffee break. But it doesn't taste like coffee, but goes well with coffee. So I brought my coffee with me today. So let's see how it goes. Itadakimasu. It's actually pretty good. Much better than expected. So next we have melon. Mm. It's so melon. It has way too strong melon flavor. Next we have chocolate orange. Overall, not bad. Next, graham cracker. This is fantastic. Next I'm gonna go cheesecake. This is marvelous. If you're a cheesecake person like me, you will definitely like this. Next, strawberry cheesecake. You get some decent strawberry flavor and cheesecake flavor at the same time, which is amazing. Next, apple cinnamon. I'm not a big fan of this. There is a lot of cinnamon in it, which makes this horrible. Pistachio. Look at this cute squirrel. Kawaii ne. Kawaii. It's not great, but not horrible either. Next, pudding. Mm. Mm, it's disgusting. 
It's way too sweet. Let's go next one. We have strawberry milk. Ah, holy crap. This is nasty. This is the worst one. So this is the last one. I've got cookies and cream. This is the best thing I've ever had in my mouth. Sorry to interrupt, but believe it or not, the US does have a few exclusive flavors you can't get in Japan. First up, pumpkin pie. Yo, this is exactly like pumpkin pie. Yeah, they hit it out of the park with that one. Wow, key lime pie. This one's so good, it tastes just like key lime pie. These are both fantastic. Broody cereal. What's, what cereal is this? Is that Fruit Loops? It tastes exactly like Fruit Loops. Gingerbread. Raspberry cream. I love this one. Yo, Joe. You eat? Ugh. All right, try it. Let's go. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, Starburst. Good call. Witch's Brew. Crispy wafers and marshmallow flavored cream. These are great. Yeah, it has like um, a frosting flavor to it. We got uh, glow in the dark. Wait, what's supposed to glow in the dark? The packaging or the, that's not fun. I thought it, this was gonna glow in the dark. The packaging? Let's see it, let's give it a shot. Nothing's glowing. All right, lights back on. This is a regular Kit Kat. This is regular, how disappointing was that? Yeah, thumbs down. Birthday cake. Close like a frosting and sprinkles flavor. Man, they're all really good. Also in the US, you get a lemon crisp flavor. Sold out everywhere. It was like a supreme drop. The second those hit the shelves, they were gone. Also, Kit Kat in the US has this line called Duos. As you can see, three different flavors. Two flavors in one. We got mint and dark chocolate. It's just like thin mint. Mocha and chocolate. Eh, I'm already, I'm not predicting this is gonna be anything special. It's just okay. Strawberry and dark chocolate. Is the way I'm eating these annoying? I mean, it's not terrible, but maybe strawberry and chocolate have been too sweet with a dark chocolate, it's kind of good. So these were fun, right? These were fun? No? All right, back to Japan. Kit Kat has a collection of flavors inspired by the many regions and prefectures of Japan. So I'm gonna start with this Mount Fuji, the highest mountain in Japan. It's 3,776 meters high. And the flavor is strawberry cheesecake flavor. How can I open this? Here we go. Yeah, it looks great. It's pretty good, but it tastes exactly the same as the one that I tasted 10 minutes ago. <laughs> All right, next one is this Shinshu apple. Shinshu is kind of very old way to call Nagano Prefecture. And Nagano Prefecture is located in the center of Japan and is famous for delicious apples. And finally, they turn into Kit Kats. Oh. This is the nicest chocolate I've ever had. Next, we have Amao strawberry. So it's basically from Kyushu. Kyushu is Japan's third largest island and is located southwest of Japan. And Amao is the best brand of strawberries in Japan. Marvelous, again. Next, I'm gonna go with this one. Ito Kyuemon Uji Matcha and Ito Kyuemon Uji Hojicha. Uji Matcha and Uji Hojicha are named after Uji City, where they are grown. And the difference between Matcha and Hojicha is, Matcha is Matcha, right? Matcha is a green tea. But Hojicha is a roasted green tea. Let's go with Uji Matcha first. Woo! Matcha is always perfect. How about Hojicha? It's as beautiful as my heart. Let's move on to the next one. We have Benimo. Benimo, which is purple sweet potato. It's from Okinawa. So Okinawa is Japan's southernmost prefecture and is famous for Benimo. Okinawa is my favorite place in Japan. I love this. It has just right sweetness. We've got Azuki sandwich flavor from Nagoya. So Nagoya is located in between Tokyo and Osaka and it's famous for its Azuki sandwich. Azuki is sweet red bean paste. So sweet red bean paste sandwich. Ooh, it's not my taste at all. Momiji manju flavor. It's from Hiroshima. So Hiroshima is located in the southwest of Japan and it's famous for its momiji manju, which is kind of maple leaf shaped cake filled with sweet bean paste. 
It tastes exactly the same as this one, sweet red bean paste. Japanese people love sweet red bean paste. Hokkaido Azuki and Strawberry Flavor. Hokkaido is the largest and northernmost prefecture in Japan, and it's famous for its azuki. Much better than the other azuki flavors. Why wasabi? And it's from Shizuoka. And Shizuoka is located along the Pacific coast and is the top wasabi producing region in Japan. Believe it or not, it's actually pretty good. Let's go, this one. Strawberry cheesecake flavor again. It's from Yokohama. Yokohama is located next to Tokyo, but Yokohama is not famous for strawberry cheesecake. I don't know why they chose strawberry cheesecake flavor for this. It tastes exactly the same, same. Next, we have Tokyo banana. So Tokyo banana is a banana shaped sponge cake with cream filling and it is very popular souvenir of Tokyo. And they turn into KitKats. Ta-da! Ooh! It's gross. When you come to Tokyo, you should try Tokyo bananas, but you should not try ban Tokyo banana KitKats. Rum raisin. It's from Tokyo. Tokyo is not famous for rum raisin, but it says rum raisin's gorgeousness and fanciness matches the image of Tokyo. There is a shot of rum. I don't like it. It contains a lot of alcohol. <laughs> Nande? Last one. A sake flavor, which is a Japanese traditional alcohol made from rice. This is a really interesting one. Oh, personally, I like it. And this is like an acquired taste. So when it comes to sake flavor, we were supposed to have yogurt sake, yuzu sake, limited edition Japan sake umeshu, but these were not available at the time of filming this. And we have Kit Kat desserts. We have Kit Kat colliders, which I cannot find in the filming of this, but it looks to be almost like vanilla flavored cups with Kit Kat chunks broken up in it. Oh man, I had too, much, too many Kit Kats. <sighs> and then we have these, these Kit Kat ice cream cones. Mm. I, I, I hit a wall real hard. And a giant Kit Kat XL wall. And I, want, I officially do not want to do this anymore. <laughs> Better, but not by much more. Yeah, so that's it for the US. Sorry, we have so few flavors. Japan has a Kit Kat called Otona no Amasa, which translates to sweetness for adults. Ow! Alright, yeah. Don't let your kids watch this part. Alright, so it's a line of Kit Kat flavors that are a little more bitter and less sweet than regular Kit Kats. So here we have Otona no Amasa strawberry, white, and dark matcha, and dark chocolate. All right, so let's give it a try first. This is just straight up dark chocolate, as you can imagine. Strawberry. Ooh, it's actually tart. This is good. All right, so let's move on to the next one. We've got dark matcha. Mmm, this is so deep. Much deeper than the other matcha flavors. So last one, we've got Otona no Amasa white chocolate. This is the best one. Among these Otona no Amasa chocolates, just right sweetness. All right, so let's do matcha taste test. In Japan, matcha flavored Kit Kats are so popular. Over the years, we've introduced 13 different, 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 different matcha flavors. But currently, we were only able to get these three. So let's see how different they are. First, dark matcha. Deep matcha. But it's also deep. Hito Kyuemon Uji Matcha. So freaking hard to tell the difference. But I'd say this one is the most delicious one. Kyoto. You can get it in Kyoto or order online. So here we have classy chocolates called Sublime. So we have white Sublime and raw milk Sublime and a volcanic green Sublime and orange volcanic Sublime, yellow ruby Sublime. All right, so let's try some out. I'm getting sick of the sweetness. Itadakimasu. It doesn't taste anything. I was thinking that, you know, like it tastes like strawberry or raspberry or something, but did I get COVID? 
Copy that. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so I'm gonna go yellow volcanic. Volcano. Ooh, this is the bitterest. I've got orange. Bitter. Now I'm so scared. Green, sublime. It tastes exactly same as this too. So bitter. Next we have milk sublime. It tastes exactly the same as regular flavor. I prefer this one. Last one. I've got white sublime. Compared to the Otonano Amasa white chocolate, it's much better. I'm done. Hey guys, it's Harry. I can't let you do a KitKat episode without me because KitKats were actually invented in the UK in 1935. They would eventually be distributed by Nestle across the UK, the EU and Japan. But in the US, KitKats are made and distributed by Hershey's. If you watched our Snickers episode, you'll know that there are some major taste differences between the chocolate in the UK and the US, mostly that the UK's is way better. I'm gonna do a three-way taste test between UK, US and also a Japanese KitKat to see if there's any major differences between the three. And Harry, thank you for sending me this with your cute handwriting. Thank you, Harry. Arigato. Let's try UK KitKat first. The UK one is obviously the one I'm used to. The chocolate is very smooth, not overwhelmingly sweet, and just very tasty. The UK is already like a lot richer. Okay, okay. Can I try US KitKat? I also couldn't find just a standard American KitKat anywhere. I guess we didn't bother importing the regular one. The closest thing I could find was this KitKat Duo's mocha and chocolate one. Something doesn't taste quite right about that. Yep. UK, US, they suck. They both have too much sugar. Joe, Harry, try Japan's Kit Kat. Hmm. Much smoother, creamier. In terms of picking a favorite, I think the US one gets discounted immediately. Then between the UK and the Japan one, it's kind of a different style of Kit Kat, I guess. I would say Japan and UK are pretty neck and neck. They seem very similar. Japan's Kit Kat is the best in the world. Ugh, I've eaten too much candy. Ugh. Perhaps we can pinpoint the taste difference to the ingredients. In the US, a Kit Kat is made up of sugar, wheat flour. Our Kit Kats have the following. Looking over the ingredients, I notice our Kit Kats have cocoa butter and chocolate, although it does not specify what that chocolate is made up of. Do we assume it is the same as the Hershey's chocolate bar? I don't know. Whereas the Japan Kit Kat has cocoa mass, cocoa butter, and cocoa powder. Now, if we were to believe that Nestle in Japan holds their chocolate to the same standards they do in the UK, it would mean that it would have a higher fat and coca content. According to the UK rules, a product must contain no less than 25% coca salads to be considered milk chocolate. US definitely does not go by this rule. Our Kit Kat is made up of palm oil, where theirs is vegetable oil, same in the UK. It is cheaper, but is also worse in the environment, adding to deforestation, increase in greenhouse emissions, and water pollution. So it is bad in the environment and tastes worse. Fantastic. But good news for all you vegans. Nestle has created a vegan Kit Kat with substituted milk with a rice-based alternative. But availability is currently limited so they are not available in the U.S. or Japan. This is a U.S. Kit Kat miniature, and it is 8.5 grams. It's the closest size we have to Japan's mini. This is 42 calories, 2.2 grams of fat, 6 milligrams of sodium, 5.8 grams of carbs, four of those are sugar, and one gram of protein. In Japan, the mini is the most popular size. It's 62 calories and 3.5 grams of fat, 3.5 to 11.4 milligrams of sodium, 8.99 to 19.4 grams of total carbs, and 0.9 grams of protein. The most common Kit Kat size in the US is the four finger bar. 210 calories, 11 grams of fat, seven of those are saturated, 20 milligrams of sodium, 28 grams of carbs, 23 of those are sugar, and two grams of protein. The closest size we have to that in Japan is the Kit Kat bar. It contains 224 calories. The most calorie Kit Kat in the US we got is the Kit Kat XL. Now I unwrapped it here so you can see just how big it is. It contains 640 calories. The most calories you will get in a Kit Kat in Japan is the Big Little Pouch Bite. This bag is 275 calories. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Burger King in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars.
Here's everything you can find on the menu at the Burger King in Japan, but not in the US. Here's everything you can find at a US Burger King you cannot get in Japan. All right, so let's start with exclusive burgers. So here we have teriyaki lettuce burger and teriyaki whopper. <laughs> Huge. Next we have avocado salad burger and avocado whopper. Ah, a little cute baby. Look at this. And whopper. <laughs> Totally different. This one is so huge. And avocados, tomato, no tomatoes. I don't know why. Next, we have Quattro Cheese Whopper. Oh, big boy. We've got Smoky Barbecue Whopper and Smoky Barbecue Whopper Junior. And here is Spicy Whopper. Ooh, it's hot sauce. Next, we have Tartar Chicken Burger. Ooh, it's got a lot of tartar sauce, chicken, crispy. Burger King in Japan just released a brand new burger called Guilty Burger. It's basically butter burger. Why? What have you done? Let's check out this Guilty Butter Beef Burger first. The bun is different. Itadakimasu. Just a little bit of butter flavor, but I don't feel as guilty as it claims. This one is guilty butter croquet sandwich. Ooh, guilty. And here is guilty butter chicken burger. First one is something that BK has exclu- Oh my god. This is called the Texas Whopper. This is nice <laughs> Two patties, cheese, bacon, bunch of veggies. Wait for it. The triple Whopper. Look at the size of this thing. The weight of it has completely flattened the bottom bun, and there's nothing between the patties of meat. <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing over there? Next, uh, oh, the Bacon King. Oh my God. Looks to be a pretty bacon-centric. Looks like a double Whopper with cheese, bacon, mayo, ketchup, mustard. They didn't mess with the veggies. Thank you. You're not fooling anyone getting lettuce and onion on that one. The Rodeo Burger is a little guy with onion rings. The Rodeo Burger. Yeehaw. On to the chicken. Let's put this here. Japan does not have what we call the original chicken sandwich. And I don't know why Burger King, maybe just to set itself apart, the chicken sandwich is this like sub shape, right? This is like, it's like I'm holding the phone. This is great. Chicken Junior, spicy chicken Junior. Let's go spicy. Barely registers on the spice meter. Wait. Yeah. BKs in the US have something called the Chicken Sandwich. You can get the sandwich regular or deluxe. You can also get the sandwich flavor regular or spicy. So here is the regular regular. And as you can see, just comes with sauce and pickles and the chicken. You can get it deluxe and spicy. So we went with deluxe, comes with all these veggies that you brush off right when you start eating it. And it is got a spicy kind of hue to the chicken there. Here's our side menu. Let's start with this one. We've got hot dog. It's got such a big sausage. <laughs> this one is chili beans hot dog. And next we have this little guy, snack chicken. And last we have this one, chili cheese fries. And if you want some veggies, you can order Caesar salad, but my bad, I forgot the order. Also exclusive to the US are these, chicken fries. As you can tell, they look like fries, but they're pieces of chicken. Not bad. You can get Mott's applesauce, jalapeno cheddar bites. I've never heard of these. And now I know why. Burger King in the US has two iced coffee flavors, mocha and vanilla. Assuming that's the mocha. It's exactly like chocolate milk. Ugh, no, oh, the aftertaste is horrible. What the hell? 
That's ridiculous how bad that is. And the vanilla. That is, that is so sweet. I'm gonna keep this one. <laughs> so here is our dessert menus. Here we have coffee float, a little bit melting, sorry. And we have melon soda float, Coke float, and Coke Zero float. And here we've got premium sundae chocolate and coffee. And here is our chocolate sundae and strawberry sundae. And my favorite is this apple pie. Desserts. Here in the US, you get yourself a Hershey's Sunday pie. Ooh. This one might have uh, got a little roughed up in transit. And in the US Burger King, you can also get various shakes. Here we have Oreo shake, a chocolate Oreo shake, a chocolate shake, and a vanilla shake. All right. God, that's so good. The straight up chocolate. Oh man, this is trouble. Mmm. Wow, Burger King shakes are really good. I'm assuming this is just the straight Oreo one. Oh my God, this is fantastic. Are we all curious what a chocolate Oreo shake tastes like? Wonder no more. Good, this one's the best. Also at US Burger King, you can get a soft serve cone. I didn't get it only because we have no refrigeration unit here and it would just be a cone with a puddle of ice cream, so. Victoria, please turn me into a giant soft serve cone. So here are our drinks. Let's start with this one. This one is ginger ale and Fanta melon, oolong tea, which is Chinese tea, and orange juice. And this one is Earl Grey iced tea. Next we have Darjeeling tea. And here is Kalpis which you guys call it kalpiko in your country. But in Japan, we say kalpisu. I know it sounds like kalpis in English, but if you say kalpiko to Japanese people, they will never understand what you're talking about. So in Japan, once again, we say kalpisu. Repeat after me, kalpisu. Very good! First things you can get, you can get a little orange juice guy, and you can also get Capri Sun. Apple juice, shout out to the pouch. Burger King in the US has Coke products as well, but we have something called a Coke freestyle machine. If you haven't seen it, it's a big machine that has a bunch of uh, Coca-Cola related beverages. You can mix and match them. Anyway, we can get High C Fruit Punch, High C Pink Lemonade, Fanta Orange, Mellow Yellow, Powerade Zero, Dr. Pepper, Barks, Diet Barks. You can also get yourself a fat-free milk. There it is. Sweetened or unsweetened tea. I think I got the sweetened. I don't want any tea. Tea sucks. We also have something called frozen Cokes. That is this right here. As you can see, it's been sitting for a while, starting to separate, but we have frozen Coke. You also have a frozen Fanta Wild Cherry, a frozen Fanta Blue Raspberry, and a frozen Strawberry and Lemonade. Mmm. Oh yeah. Japan has a few exclusives that are similar but different to that in the US. So, for example, this is our plant-based Whopper. This burger is made from 100% soybeans. Itadakimasu! It's actually delicious. I like it. Mmm. When it comes to vegetarianism and veganism, they are not that popular in Japan. But gradually, especially the restaurants in Tokyo, are offering more vegan or vegetarian meals because there is more Japanese people and non-Japanese people who are vegan or vegetarian compared to other places in Japan. But overall, the vegan or vegetarian option is still limited in Japan. And in the US, we have the Impossible Whopper. What's the difference? Well, the Impossible Burger has all of these ingredients. So as you can see, a lot more. I am curious. It looks like meat, right? Tastes exactly like a Whopper. I don't think I would notice the difference. They're covering the lack of meat with like, with that char flavor that they have on there. Oh, that's good. In Japan, we call this burger crispy chicken burger. In the US, we have the before mentioned chicken sandwich, which comes in varieties of spicy and or deluxe. For breakfast, our hash brown comes in one big piece. Whereas in the US, our hash browns come in little bites. And in Japan, we have this cheese bites. Look at this. 
And in the U.S., we have eight-piece Cheesy Tots. Well. And on to the U.S. breakfast exclusives. As you can see, we have a lot more going on in our breakfast menu here in the U.S. than Japan has. Here in the U.S., you can get your breakfast sandwich and biscuit or croissant-witch options. Croissant-witch is, of course, a croissant sandwich. Took those two words, put them together. Croissant-witch. So we have bacon, egg, and cheese, ham, egg, and cheese, and sausage, egg, and cheese. We have two breakfast burritos. The Egg Normous breakfast burrito, which I'm assuming is this one, because it is enormous. The breakfast burrito junior. Look at this little guy. French toast sticks. Who doesn't like French toast? Finally, pancake platter with just three pancakes, or a pancake platter with three pancakes and a side of sausage. The fries at Burger King in Japan come in three sizes. Small, medium, and large. Fries in the U.S. at Burger King come in four sizes. Value, small, medium, or large. Or maybe it's value, small, medium, large. Does this look right? Any of you Food Wars heads would have seen the Burger King U.S. versus U.K. episode where we uncovered fry gates. Two sizes had pretty much the exact same unit of fries. Now, as you can see from these, I can't tell which is the value in the small. I'm assuming this is the medium. Well, unfortunately, we cannot do that amazingly accurate scientific test that we did in the last episode because the fries have been compromised. They all came in the same bag and I think they knew what we were up to and they purposely dumped all the fries in the same bag to contaminate the experiment. You've outsmarted us this time. Let's weigh the large fries to see how much you actually get. 151 grams. What if we did a thing where like, whatever lands and stays on counts as, counts as it? Does that seem like a fair thing to say? That's really smart what I just did there, I think. It's 195 grams? Let's weigh Japan's Whopper. 250 grams. And let us weigh our Whopper in the US. Yo! 270? Yeah, 270 grams. It's a pretty surprisingly close. If you're not feeling like having beef, Burger King also has some chicken options. You can order your chicken nuggets in five pieces and eight pieces. Here in the US, you can get your nuggets in sizes of four pieces, eight pieces, or 16 pieces. And it's worth noting that you can only get the 16 piece online or through their app. And even if you do, they still just give you two eight pieces. I don't know why either. So let's weigh eight piece nuggets. 130 grams. Divide by eight equals 16.25 grams per nugget. I don't know if we can get as, as accurate of a measurement for something so small. So we will use this guy instead. So I'll just do this and put the scale up here. Ah, that is a bad idea. Eight pieces is ah, 104 grams divided by eight is 13 grams. In Japan, we have three drink sizes. Small and medium and large. In the US, we have four drink sizes. Value, which only comes with a value meal, small, medium, and large. Now, I wanna note that the US's largest drink size is 112% larger than Japan's largest drink. Now, what's the biggest meal you can get in Japan's Burger King? Over here, it's the King Meal. The King Meal ranges anywhere from 790 to 990 yen, depending on the burger you choose. It has your choice of an avocado Whopper, double cheeseburger, or Whopper. We chose the double cheeseburger, which comes with small fries, five-piece nuggets, medium Coke, and apple pie. And in the US, currently our single biggest menu item at a Burger King is the $30 Ultimate Party Bundle. Now you can only order this party bundle through the BK app. And it includes two Whoppers, two double cheeseburgers, two original chicken sandwiches, two eight-piece chicken nuggets, 
four small fries and four small drinks. And it costs $30. In Japan, a Whopper cheese set, it costs around 890 yen or $7.80 US. Whereas in the US, the same meal with a small fry and drink is $9.29 or 1,059.65 Japanese yen. What about the medium? If you get that the medium fry and medium drink, it's $10.29 or 1,173.71 Japanese yen. What about the large? Poof, hey, there it is right in front of me. Large fries and drink, $11.29 or 1,287.78 Japanese yen. Let's look at calories. In Japan, a Whopper is 676 calories. The calories aren't too bad, but watch out for the sodium levels. One Japan Whopper is 113% of your daily recommended amount of sodium. Too much. In the US, our Whopper is 667 calories. Both Whoppers are pretty comparable in most of the categories, but there's one statistic that really stands out, the salt content. The sodium level in Japan's Whopper is 122% higher than that in the US. Let's make that a meal. A Whopper with large fries and a large Coke is 1,323 calories. And the same meal in the US is 1,680 calories, so a lot more. Now, a big portion of the calories actually come from the large Coke. The US's is roughly 182% more calories than that of Japan's. Let's look at the highest calorie sandwich at Japan's Burger King. The double Whopper cheese is here. Eating one of these is already half of your daily calories and a little over your daily recommended protein. The main thing to watch out for here is the sodium, which is 152% of your daily recommended volume. Whereas in the US, our highest calorie sandwich is the spicy chicken deluxe sandwich, seen here. If you're worried about your health, steer clear of this one. The fat content is 190% your daily allowance, and the sodium is over 200% of your daily allowance. Yikes. As I mentioned earlier, the biggest menu item is the king meal. If you get it with a double bacon cheeseburger, the total calories are 1,329. That's 66% of your daily calories. And of course, the $30 ultimate party bundle, which is 8,903 calories or 445% your daily caloric allowance. Burger King in Japan doesn't disclose the exact ingredients, but it does disclose where the ingredients come from and where they are finished processing. For example, the Whopper beef patties are sourced from Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. But they are processed in Australia, Japan, and Austria. Burger King in the US is pretty vague when it comes to its ingredients. They don't disclose a comprehensive list anywhere. At the end of 2020, Burger King permanently banned 120 artificial flavors from their menu, including aluminum, yellows one through five, BHA, and BHT. Here's the complete list. It was actually a lot of stuff. Good for you guys. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Wendy's in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. In Japan, our Wendy's hamburgers come in four sizes, junior, single, double, and triple. In the US, our burgers come in four sizes, junior, Dave's single, Dave's double, and the Dave's triple. Look at the size of this thing. In Japan, our nuggets come in orders of five and 10. Our US nuggets come in four, six, and 10 piece. Our Wendy's drinks come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. And in the US, we also have three drink sizes, small, medium, you've got to be kidding me. Look at the size of this thing. This might be 40 ounces, Yuli. Only one way to find out. Oh, oh not quite 40, so 36 or 37 fluid ounces of Coca-Cola. And how big is a bladder? This looks like more than like I would normally pee in the morning. Okay, let's measure our large drink. It measures exactly 500 milliliters. 
our Wendy's fries come in two sizes, small and medium. Our fries come in four sizes, junior, small, medium, large. Let's weigh our largest. <laughs> Roughly 180 grams. It weighs 135 grams. Japan's chili comes in two sizes, medium and large. And the US, our chili comes in two sizes, small and large. Let us weigh the largest now, including the paper cup, 430 grams. Let's weigh our large chili, 265 grams. In Japan, a Wendy's Burger USA Double is 730 yen or $6.38 US. Our US Dave's Double goes for $5.99 or around 685 Japanese yen. That's a 6.16% decrease in price in the US. Let's make it a meal. In Japan, if you get your burger as a set, it includes a small fries and a three piece nuggets and a drink. It costs around 440 yen more. Our meals only include fries and drink. So a small Dave's double meal, and I threw in a four piece because we don't have a three piece, works out to $10.98. That's an 8.12 increase cost in the US. Mind you, we did get an extra nugget. Speaking of nuggets, in Japan, 10 piece nugget is 510 yen, which breaks down to 51 yen per nugget. In the US, a 10 piece nugget is 429, which makes it per nugget around 43 cents. So per nugget average, the US is paying 8.11% less. A baconator double in Japan is 850 yen or $7.43 US. In the US, you get that same Baconator for $7.49 or 857 Japanese yen. So close, only a 0.82% increase. Here's everything you can get at the Wendy's in Japan you cannot get in the US. And here's everything at a US Wendy's you can't get in Japan. One thing I wanna point out is that in Japan, Wendy's is known as Wendy's First Kitchen. First Kitchen is a Japanese fast food chain and it was acquired by Wendy's in 2016 and became a hybrid of Wendy's and First Kitchen's menus. And we call them fucking, which is the abbreviation of First Kitchen in a Japanese way. It's like First Kitchen's fa and Kitchen's ki and m mm, and say fucking. Repeat after me. Fucking. Got it, buddy. Very good. So here are our Japan's exclusive burgers. So this one is bacon mushroom melt. And this one is just mushroom melt. We have Wendy's bacon egg burger. We also have Wendy's cheese bacon egg burger. And this sauce, tartar sauce. Umai. Everybody's curious what this is. This one is wild rock. It's got no buns. It's got two beef patties. I think I should try this one. Itadakimasu. This meat itself has a good taste and some kind of like peppery flavor, but it's a little bit dry. I wouldn't get this again. And last things, we have Junior Teriyaki Burger. And we have Junior Teriyaki Cheeseburger. The Big Bacon Cheeseburger. The Big Bacon Double. Look at this. Yep, one, two, three. The big bacon triple. I mean, I don't know what 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 angle is best to look at this at. And then we got big bacon's on the fancy bread. This must be the big bacon's classics. This looks like a big bacon. Looks like shredded cheese and stuff on this. Everything's bacon something with these guys. At this point, it's just like how many slabs of meat do you want on your bacon sandwich? Two things you can get at a Wendy's in the U.S. Cannot get in Japan are just the Junior Burger and the Junior Cheeseburger. Look at, this little, look at this little guy, look at this. Literally every fast food burger place has a version of this. Chicken! Ugh. The Asiago Chicken Sandwiches. We got the Asiago Chicken Ranch Classic Club. I said that in the wrong order, but you get what I mean. Probably this one. This is the fried Asiago Club with bacon. And then there is the Spicy, which I'm assuming is this one. And then they got the grilled. That's pretty good. Don't like Asiago? Wendy's has you covered. So many chicken sandwiches, 
at Wendy's that of course are not asiago This is the grilled chicken sandwich. As you can see, it is grilled. And then we have the grilled chicken, big bacon. Man, they, got, they must have gotten some deal on, on bacon for Wendy's. Everything's got bacon on it. I'm gonna go ahead and assume this is the big bacon fried chicken sandwich. Cause it has bacon on it. So you have the spicy big bacon cheddar chicken. In Japan, our Wendy's have pasta, which were originally on the first kitchen menu. So here we have ramen style soy cream pasta with spinach and ham. It expires 2023, January 20th. Joe, I'll keep this for you. Nah, my guy, you can go ahead and throw that out. And next we have ramen style tan tan soup pasta with spinach and ham. So tan tan soup is kind of like a spicy chili flavored soup with miso and pork mince. Tan tan soup and tan tan ramen are very popular in Japan. Tomato sauce pasta with mozzarella and bacon. All right, next we have beef chick meat cream spaghetti. Plastic. <laughs> next we have carbonara spaghetti. Carbonara. 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 Yeah. Arra. Okay. Carbonara. <laughs> It's got bacon and this creamy carbonara sauce. Not bad. Last thing I have is spicy kadoro spaghetti. So spicy kadoro in Japanese is mentaiko. And mentaiko spaghetti is also very popular in Japan. Unfortunately, some Americans I know don't like mentaiko so much because of the texture and smell. But for me, mentaiko is super Fucking delicious. Uh, it's been a while uh, since I got this one. It's been like three hours. Mmm. <laughs> Joe, try it out. I appreciate the offer, George, but you can go ahead and finish that because it looks fucking disgusting. We got salads over here on this end. The first one looks like we got the Parmesan Caesar salad. Comes with, of course, Caesar dressing and what looks to be Parmesan crisps. This next salad is ridiculous. We're gonna go ahead and put quotes around salad. Wendy's has a taco salad that comes with tortilla chips, sour cream, signature salsa, and if that wasn't enough, chili. And before we continue, you confirm that the taco salad is supposed to have chili on it? They told you that. It's gonna put the chips all around here. I can't believe this. This is so gross. Signature salsa, then chili. Oh, it smells so bad. Oh God. I'm just, this is just like eating chili with tortilla chips. They said there's some salt, I'm just pushing this around. On to the next salad, the Southwest avocado salad. Oh my God, there's bacon on it, that's weird. That was in Dave Thomas's obituary. I want everything to be covered in bacon. But yeah, chicken, avocado, bacon, cheese, and some sauce. This makes sense. And the last salad, apple pecan salad. That smells. Oh, because it's like got blue cheese on it. Roasted pecan bits, pomegranate vinaigrette. Mmm, apples are nice. It's kind of nice to get a little bit of actual like, fruit, something nutritious while doing this. It's like my body's like, what is this? So here are our Japan side menu. We have a few flavor options for fries. So we have happy butter flavor fries. Urgh. Happy butter flavor. It has just subtle buttery flavor. Mm. Burnt butter soy sauce flavor. Rip it off. I don't know what's going on here, but it's pretty good. Much better than this. Savory steamed potato butter. It gets quite strong buttery flavor. Definitely, I prefer this one than the happy butter flavor. This is not happy. This one is chicken consomme flavor. Mmm, this is the best fries I've ever had in my life. Now, I'm gonna introduce you this spicy chicken breast. Wendy's in the US also has baked potatoes. Let's see what we got. So of course, there's your regular and this one, oh yeah, this one's got like chives and stuff in it. If I was to stop here, you would go, wow, what a tasteful selection of healthy potatoes. But of course we don't stop here. <laughs> we move on to absolute baked potato madness. 
Ah, number one. Oof. Cheese baked potato. Drown this thing in cheese. It's like, it's like, ooh. It's like cake to the side. Ugh. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> the chili and cheese baked potato. Ugh. If you are like me, you're wondering yourself, something's missing. Something is missing from this potato menu. Yuli, can you guess what that is? The bacon, cheese, baked potato. Oh, I got big pieces of bacon on this one too. Ooh! You can get spicy chicken nuggets. Yes, siri bob. Seasoned potatoes. All right, some fruit finally made the menu. Apple slices. It wouldn't be a Wendy's category without the Baconator fries. <laughs> we need the bacon meter in this episode. Last of the sides. Oh yeah. Oatmeal bar. Looks like a cliff bar. Well, oh, it's actually pretty good. So here are our Japan's exclusive drinks. We have tapioca royal milk tea with brown sugar and tapioca milk with brown sugar. Tornado. Mmm. This is amazing. Simply amazing. I love this. So here are our other drinks. We have Pepsi, orange juice, and ginger ale, lemonade, and melon soda, peach tea, and iced tea. Iced matcha, and this one is iced cocoa. So here we have our hot drinks. We have Darjeeling tea, and we have cafe mocha, and we have peach tea. Mmm, I like this and we have coffee latte and cocoa and matcha. This is matcha, but it looks like water from 100 years ago. Our Wendy's has Frosty Chinos, which I'm assuming are Frosty's meat Frappuccinos, Frosty Chinos, but it does not appear that there's Frosty's in this. They have two flavors, vanilla and chocolate. Mm. I'm assuming this is the vanilla. Wendy's is smart on this one. It isn't that, it isn't that sweet. I was expecting it to be like undrinkable, but it's actually kind of nice. All right, this one is the chocolate. Yeah, also it's a nice flavor. Because the Frosty Chinos, you know what that means? At Wendy's you can also get, oh yeah, Frosties. They don't have these in Japan. I feel like this is the staple menu item. <laughs> I love these so much. Fantastic. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Gotta go for the chocolate. Don't bother finding me the spoon. I'm just gonna do a little taste here. It's great. The frosties are great. It's like a milkshake, but it's super thick and delicious. Japan, you want this. Yeah, thick. It is thick. In Japan, we have floats instead of frosties. We have Coke float and melon soda float. Japan has an exclusive breakfast sandwich. It's called the breakfast sandwich. It's got tomato, lettuce, and um, I believe this is beef or pork patties. Okay, whereas Japan has one exclusive breakfast sandwich, we have way more. Like all the fast food here in America, we take our breakfast very seriously. You can get yourself a maple bacon croissant. It looks like it's a chicken sandwich that of course has bacon and maple syrup on the croissant. Uh, we have what just appears to be the bacon biscuit. Bacon, egg, cheese, in the incredibly dry biscuits. Bacon croissant. I don't know about this one. Moving on to the sausage zone of the Wendy's breakfast. This is the special sausage biscuit. No, 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 no. Here's what I hate about this. Pick a drier thing to have for breakfast. I feel like it'd be impossible to swallow a bite of this. You're gonna choke on it. Here we go. See, this is what I'm talking about. They might've gotten this backwards. This is actually the better sausage one. This at least has a better chance of not getting stuck in your throat. The sausage croissant also has egg, thank you. They have a few things that are honey butter based. I am so glad that fast food places are introducing honey to their breakfast menu. I think maybe it's to do with the fact that chicken sandwiches have become so popular. First one we got here is the honey butter biscuit. <laughs> hey, it's just a biscuit with honey butter. I mean, yeah, I'll have this anytime. I'll have this anytime. This one has some heft to it. It's the hot honey biscuit. Yeah. A little chicken on there. Yep. I really like that. This is the special chicken 
croissants. So here are our desserts. So here we have melotozzo. So melotozzo are marichotto style pastries, which are popular in Rome and Japan as well, made with melon bread. So melon bread is a type of sweet Japanese bread, which has a sugar cookie crust on the surface. But what's funny is that it doesn't have a melon flavor at all. At all. The reason it's called melon bread is that it just looks like melon. Does it look like melon? It does in Japan. Ugh. And this time, First Kitchen made a maritozzo using melon bread and mascarpone cheese whipped cream, and it's called melotozzo. So here we have melotozzo uh, tiramisu, and melotozzo matcha, and melotozzo plain. So actually, yesterday was my birthday, February 18th. Hey, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, George. Thank you for your message. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. So this is my birthday present. All right, so let's give it a shot. Best birthday present ever. Itadakimasu. This is so good. <laughs> I can't stop eating this. Mm. So Wendy's in Japan has a Japanese traditional sweet since it has been a collaboration with First Kitchen. So we have Shiratama Cream Zenzai. Ooh. So it has three main ingredients, ice cream and sweet red beans and the Shiratama, which is kind of like a mochi rice cake. And my grandma likes this type of Zenzai. This is for you, my grandma. And also we have mini pancakes. In the US, we only have two exclusive desserts and they're both cookies. And that's no disrespect to cookies. Cookies are great, but one of those fun like Italian ice cream sandwiches they had. Anyway, you get two cookies here in the US, a chocolate chunk cookie and a sugar cookie. Our Wendy's double burger is 578 calories and 29% of your daily recommended amount and 60% of the recommended daily sodium. Our double burger, the Dave's Double, isn't much better. Ours is 850 calories and way more fat, over 70%, but less sodium. Just a bit over half of the daily amount. Still, not great. Make the meal in Japan, and that increases the calories to 1,089. That's 55% of your daily recommended calorie intake. And if you make it a combo here, we chose the small and took a few sips. That's 440 more calories, bringing the total to 1,290, or 64.5% of your daily allowance. In Japan, the single menu item with the most calories is the eight-piece fried chicken pack, which contains 4,018 calories, 201% of your daily calories. In the US, our single biggest calorie menu item is the Feed the Fam deal. A oh, fam, yeah right, this is all for you. It is two spicy chicken sandwiches, two junior bacon cheeseburgers, and four a small fries. Total 2,780 calories, which is 139% of your daily intake. Japan's Wendy's doesn't disclose their ingredients list. Why, Japan? The US sure does. Now, is there anything we should be looking out for? Of course there is. Let's start with sodium nitrate, which is found in the Baconator's applewood smoked bacon. Sodium nitrate is a chemical that is used to cure meats and gives meat that appealing pink color. Perfect for bacon. Also, get this, it's super toxic and is restricted for purchase online. People have accidentally eaten too much of it and died. It's also been used in homicides. Yikes. Sodium nitrate is on a list of Japan's designated food additives but our Wendy's gets its bacon imported from Denmark, where it isn't banned, but being reduced in use. Our American cheese contains lecithin, common emulsifier that according to one academic, a worrisome number of scientific studies have suggested that too much of it can promote depression. <sighs> the pickles contain polysorbate 80. This is commonly used as an emulsifier in foods, but the pickles tend to be used as a solubilizer. Not how that's pronounced, sorry which helps other ingredients in the brine fully dissolve. Studies have suggested it can cause colon cancer in mice. Not fantastic. There is no info on Wendy's website of where the pickles come from, but we want to point out that polysorbate 80 is on Japan's list of designated additives, and therefore is permitted to be used in Japan. 
From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Domino's in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. In Japan, Domino's pizzas come in three sizes. Our Domino's pizza comes in four sizes. So this one is medium, which is cut into eight slices. Over here on this end, you got the small, that's 10 inch pizza. And here's regular, which is also cut into eight slices. Next up is our medium, that's a 12 inch pizza. And this one is large. This one is cut into 12 slices. Then we move to our large, 14 inches. And finally, the extra large, which is 16 inches. Look at all that grease. A Domino's large plain pizza has a 33 centimeters diameter, or an 855.3 square centimeters area, and costs 2,000 yen. So breaking that down, our pizza is 2.33 yen per square inch, or about two cents. Now take our large. This is a 14 inch pizza, also a 35.56 centimeter pizza. And it has a surface area of 993.1 square centimeters. That's 1.4 cents per square inch or 1.62 Japanese yen. But what gives you the most food for your money? So here's a large plain slice with a pan crust. And here's another with hand toasted crust. Let's weigh both right now and see which is more. So first, let's weigh pan crust. 51 grams. And hand toasted crust. It weighs 49 grams. And we will do the same. I want to note that right now in America, you can only get the pan Domino's in the medium size. Same exact experiment, only I'm doing two medium pizzas, medium pan slice, medium hand toss slice. So this is the hand toss slice. And it weighs a, a smidge over 75, we'll go 76. And a pan. That goes in there too. 110 grams making the difference this amount. I'm not doing math. In Japan, we have seven different crust options. Number one, we have pan. And number two, we have hand tossed. And number three, we have ultra crispy. Ooh. It's like a cracker. Number four, we have cheese burst where a string cheese is placed around the edge of a crust and sprinkled with consomme parmesan seasoning. Ooh. Number five, we have the cheese roll. It's got mozzarella cheese in the crust. And number six, we have mille fille or mille foy, mille fail. In Japanese, we say mille fille. So this one is mille fille pizza which has two layers of crust with camembert mixed cheese in between. Mil feu. Mil feu. French people, please correct my pronunciation. Number seven, the last one we have, the triple mil feu. It's got three layers of crust with cheese in between. Wow. In the US, we have only five crust options. I realize there's four pizzas in front of me. Let me explain. One crust option you can get here, and it's a small only, is the gluten-free crust. I don't know how bread is gluten-free, but we figured it out. Ta-da. We also have the hand-tossed, which is more of a standard, pillowy. I mean, this might be like standard delta is what we think a pizza looks like. This is the pan. Look how thick that is, man. That's like triple the dough thickness. Good on you for the pan. Now you can get this in the medium only. We also have a crunchy thin crust and we have so many pizzas here, to be honest, I don't know which one it is. So when it just comes up in the video, I'll show it off. But imagine a crunchy thin pizza. Oddly enough, we also have something called the Brooklyn style pizza. Now, this is reserved for large and extra large pizzas only. And this is a Brooklyn style right here, extra large. Obviously isn't crispy because it's sagging. This is really thin. Here's everything you can get at the Japanese Domino's that you cannot get in the US. Here's everything you can get at a US Domino's you cannot get in Japan. So everyone, look at this. This is a limited time offer pizza. 
It's called the best 34. Look at this lid. It's disgusting. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. So this one has all 34 Domino's toppings, like teriyaki chicken, mayo, spinach, tomato, shrimp. This is huge. It's like my baby. The New Yorker style pizza is similar to the Brooklyn XL option you can get in America. But only in Japan, you can get the Quattro New Yorker. It's a 16-inch pizza with each New Yorker topping style covering a quarter of the pizza. So one quarter is pepperoni, and one is cheese, and one is pepperoni and sausage, and one is ham and mushroom. So here we have Nippon favorite series. Nippon or Nihon means Japan in Japanese. So these pizzas feature Japanese ingredients. This one charcoal grilled teriyaki chicken. It's got teriyaki chicken, teriyaki sauce, spinach, mayonnaise, and corn. Next we have Hokkaido three cheeses. So Hokkaido is the Northern Island prefecture in Japan and um, it's famous for its cheese. It's got Hokkaido Gouda cheese, Hokkaido cheddar cheese, and Hokkaido camembert and sliced asparagus. We have spicy mayo and mochi. It's got mochi rice cake and corn, pork sausage, and sliced asparagus, and Korean seaweed flakes. And last one, we've got charcoal grilled beef and spinach and mushrooms. Mmm. Oh, uma. Uma. This beef is so tender and it's got so much like charcoal flavor, which makes this amazing. I love this. So many exclusive pizzas here at the US Domino's. I don't know where to begin, so I'll just start with this one that I'm holding. This is the Cali Chicken Bacon Ranch. I don't know what makes a California in E or Cali E, but it definitely has chicken and bacon and ranch, and it's big. Thank you very much. All right, chicken taco pizza. Oh yeah, got like taco spices to it. Good job on this one. Next one, the cheeseburger pizza. Um, yeah, oh my God. I'm gonna say something crazy. This tastes exactly like a McDonald's cheeseburger. Even has like the oniony and the ketchupy taste. Wow, that is a surprise. I thought this one was gonna be bad, but it's actually pretty good. The extravaganza. It has pepperoni sausage, ham, mushrooms, black olives, green peppers. This is the meatza, which I'm assuming is just a lot of meat. I'm seeing sausage, I'm seeing pepperoni, and maybe hamburger. Yeah, I'll put this in the good pile. I with this one. Philly cheesesteak, oh no. In some weird way, I'm blaming you for this. Since you handed this to me, this is your fault. Look at this nightmare. Meat somewhere on here. I'm also seeing green peppers. Oh, look, look, it's like, it's like, look at that, it's like stuck to the box. No. Buffalo chicken, okay, okay. This is more of my speed. Chicken, no, not tomato sauce, like a white sauce, good call. Mmm. This isn't buffalo enough. The capital of the great state of New York needs to be better represented in this pizza. The capital of New York is Buffalo, correct? No? We got the Memphis barbecue chicken. Love Memphis, love barbecue, love chicken. Yeah. The key thing here is the barbecue sauce. I don't know what is in it, but man, that's really good. Memphis, capital of the great state of Tennessee. Everyone. Here is the ultra cheese New Yorker. It's got one kilogram of cheese or 2.2 pounds. OMG. Ooh. Look how thick this cheese is. Go. <laughs> Go home. It weighs 180 grams. 180 times eight equals 1,440 grams in total. So here are other Japanese specialty pizzas. So here we have Quattro Meat Max. 
So it's got charcoal grilled teriyaki chicken and charcoal grilled beef and giga meat and gorio galbi. It's like Korean style, like beef pizza. And next we have seafood special. This part, and this part is shrimp mayonnaise. So this part, it's got shrimp, octopus, mussels, little neck clams, makchor clams, green peppers, and cherry tomatoes. Next, we've got garlic master. Looks so spicy. Garlic and pork, sausage, and pancetta. And this part, it's got jalapeno, obviously. It's picante, pepperoni, and Italian sausage and onions. And look at this huge thing. Mayo jaga. So jaga or jagaimo means potato in Japanese. It's got potato and pork sausage and a lot of mayo. Our US Domino's has sandwiches and pasta. I was not a fan of the Philly cheesesteak pizza, but let's see what the Philly cheesesteak tastes like in its native form of sandwich. Better than the pizza. Also the US Domino's, you can get a buffalo chicken sandwich, a chicken habanero sandwich, the Mediterranean veggie, no thanks, a chicken bacon ranch, an Italian sandwich, and of course, the chicken parm sandwich. Our Domino's has four pastas to choose from. I only got two, the chicken Alfredo and the Italian sausage marinara. You can also get a chicken carbonara and a pasta primavera. I've just been informed I have to eat this. It's strong flavor on this. I would skip the pasta at Domino's, personally. But this thing is like baked on, see how baked this is? Like, come on, I feel like Chef Ramsay here just like, oh, come on. Oh, it's just baked on here. In the US, we have a few chicken options you can't get in Japan. Yes, Japan has wings, but they don't have these flavors. Visually, I can see why. First flavor we got here is the garlic parmesan at Domino's. What are you doing? Next one we got, I'm assuming this is the honey barbecue. But these drizzles, what are you guys doing drizzling, man? Just toss it. Toss it in the sauce. Nobody wants a drizzle. Oh, wait a second. This is a sweet mango habanero. I wasn't expecting that heat. Oh man, very good. These are, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Toss it in the sauce. Why'd you squirt it on here like as an afterthought? Honey barbecue, right? Is this not nuts? This is nuts, right? That they did it like this. I like the sauce. So Domino's also does their wings in boneless flavors. They have obviously those three, and you can also get these two other ones. And I see we have a crispy bacon and tomato, and this one must be the spicy jalapeno pineapple. Whoa, what? Hell yeah. All right. Get that B-roll fast, there it goes! I know, I, you're, you're, your audible gasps are warranted. I don't know what this, what am I supposed to do with this? Ooh, that's what I'm looking forward to, Yuli. We got the food less than an hour ago. I don't think an hour is unrealistic for food to sit. I think you guys gotta put some more chemicals in your cheese to keep it goopy or longer. Ooh, I got some pineapple and I got some jalapeno and I got some chicken, let's check it out. Yeah, overall, everything here tastes pretty good. Presentation, you gotta work on that. In Japan, we don't have boneless wings, but we have Japanese fried chicken, which is called karaage. It kind of looks like American boneless wings. I love karaage. And also we have chicken nuggets. Both come in four, eight, and 12 pieces. Our Domino's has breads and oven baked dips. Let's review the breads first, shall we? Over here, we have Parmesan bread twists and garlic bread twists. I know that because of their totally twisted shapes. We also have Parmesan bread bites that were currently unavailable. Whoa, uh-oh, these are very good. To Parmesan we go. Uh, not, as, not as good, but still pretty good. I mean, it's bread and cheese and oil, right? U.S. Domino's also has something called stuffed cheesy bread. You can get stuffed cheesy bread with either spinach and feta or bacon and jalapenos. Take a wild guess which one I chose. Just ripping this whole thing apart. Oh God, this thing is especially greasy. 
for whatever reason, ah, Domino's didn't stop there. Domino's has something called dips. What it appears to be is a giant dish of melted cheese. And you can get it in cheesy marinara or five cheese. What are we doing, Domino's? <laughs> what is this? Come on, guys. So this is the marinara one, I'm assuming. A pizza without the bread, right? This, these dips are literally zapping my will to live. This, please don't ever get. It's a whole bowl of cheese, Yuli. Why would, oh, look at the oil in this too. Everyone in here just gagged. Can I even dip it? <laughs> oh, whoa. I don't know what of the five cheeses is in here. Like which five? Why am I eating that? Uh -huh. <sighs> so here are our Japanese exclusive side menu items. Let's start with this one. We've got oven baked potato wedges. This one is plain, consomme, chili garlic. And this one is butter. And next we have cheese sticks. Shrimp popcorn. It comes with this tartar sauce. Here we have choregi salad. We've got Korean style uh, seaweed flakes and choregi dressing. So choregi is like Korean style, like sesame oil dressing. And fresh salad in the package. So here we have corn potage, clam chowder, minestrone black chili. You've seen these before. It is the Domino's Marbled Cookie Brownies. Liquid sugar, oh yeah. You can also get these cinnamon bread twists. Lastly, another dip. I swear to God, if there's cheese in this, I'm walking out of here and I'm never coming back. Baked apple dips. And I'm assuming you dip these into this. I'm not gonna. So here are other desserts. We have mini pancakes, heart-shaped fondant chocolate. And here we have egg custard tart. I have never tried this one before. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. This is so good. So flaky. Mmm. So this one is apple pie. And next we have custard pie. Lastly, of the sodas you can get in the US, can't get in Japan, get yourself Fanta Orange and Sprite. We have Coke Zero. It's supposed to be zero, but they gave us just normal Coke. Next we have ginger ale, Canada Dry. Canada is an amazing country. A, cool orange juice, and here is Soken Bicha. It's like Japanese blended tea. And last one, we've got Georgia Japan Craft Cafe Latte. Georgia Japan. Sounds like George Japan. I'd like to be sponsored by you. Let me try this. <laughs> it's got a lot of milk and sugar in it. I gotta be honest, it's not my taste. <laughs> They they got, like, <laughs> Take two. I really love this. Please give me a sponsorship. A Japan large hand toast pizza is 130 calories per slice or 1560 calories for the full pizza. In the US, a large hand tossed pizza slice is 280 calories, which makes the entire pizza 2240 calories. A large big pepperoni hand toast slice is 335 calories per slice or 4,020 calories for the entire pizza. Our large pepperoni is 370 calories per slice, which makes the entire pie 2,960 calories. Japan's most calorific pizza is the ultra cheese New Yorker size. One slice is 478 calories. That's 3,827 for the full pizza. 
Our US Domino's pizza with the most calories is the Cali Chicken Bacon Ranch. This is an XL of said pizza. One slice is 560 calories, and that makes the full pie 3,360 calories. Our large plain pizza has 1,620 calories total. Our large cheese is 2,240 calories. That's a 38.2% increase. Our large big pepperoni is 2,680 calories, over 34% of your daily recommended calorie intake, 333% of your daily sodium. <sighs> Too many tasty calories. Ours is 2,960 calories, 48% over your daily recommended amount. But somehow, ours has less sodium. Only 299% of your daily sodium. In October of last year, a study found detectable amounts of phthalates, a plastic softener, and common menu items from large fast food chains, including Domino's. <sighs> The study analyzed 64 food samples from several popular fast food chains and found phthalates, DNBP, and DEHP in a majority of the items. USA Today reported that food containing meat such as chicken burritos and cheeseburgers had higher levels of the chemical study, while cheese pizza had the lowest levels. Okay, so that's good news for Domino's, I guess. The study goes on to say that food handling gloves contain replacement plasticizers, which may be the source of food contamination. Sounds to me like an easy fix. Just prepare the food without gloves. Japan has a ban on DEHP in food handling gloves. Good or news, if you're a fan of Food Wars and saw the US versus UK Domino's episode, we highlighted BHA and BHT in the US pepperoni. Well, on the stewardship page, on Domino's website, they have stated, Ahem, we have eliminated a long list of ingredients from all of our core products, including BHA and BHT and PHOs, as well as trans fats from core pizza products, which is fantastic news. I clearly was going to eat it anyway, but thank you regardless. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Pocky in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. In Japan, our Pocky comes in a 72 gram box, which contains two pockets and a nine pack. Our Pockies come in basically three sizes, the 1.14 ounce box, the 2.47 ounce box, and the 4.13 ounce boxy bag. But our strawberry flavored box is smaller than this chocolate box. This is a 3.81 ounce box, which is 0.32 ounces smaller than this one. Largest box bag is this, the cookies and cream flavor, which is 4.57 ounces, or 0.44 grams larger than the chocolate box. One theory, my theory, is that the Pocky boxes contain a specific number of Pocky sticks, and each Pocky is a different weight based on the flavor coating. So we're gonna weigh each Pocky individually to see if this is true. All right, chocolate first. So seven of these are 13 grams. Can someone write that down? Strawberry. Seven is 13 grams. Was that what the first one was? Okay. Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream, seven of them are 18 grams. Well, the cookies and cream ones are definitely a lot heavier. A lot heavier. Mmm. So let's see how many Pocky are in a box. Itch, nip, some. 32, 33, 34. 34 Pocky in total. So one pocket has 17 Pocky, and another one also has 17 Pocky. Let's see how many Pockies are in this box. Oh man. Is this normal? I think I could count them like, do you wanna get like a close up on, on there before? So one, two, three, those are broken ones. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. You know how everyone was complaining about how I eat uh, Kit Kats in the Kit Kat episode? Mmm. 
Here's all the Pockies that are native to the US that are not in Japan. And here are all the Pockies native to Japan. Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. Not a solid block, so that's good. Yeah. 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 Mmm. I like those. This looks like fun, Yuli. Chocolate banana, have you had these before? You have? No, yeah, mm mm. That banana flavor hits like right away. Oh no. Matcha green tea. Any Food Wars heads watching? No. Joe does not like matcha. Mmm. Smells like a freshly cut lawn. Yeah, nah. There's also a crunchy strawberry flavor you can get here in the US, but I was not able to get my hands on it by the time of filming this episode. So, here's just regular strawberry. Uh oh. Oh, another solid block. Yeah. Mmm, yeah, dude. Put me in jail for crimes against Pockies. George's energy bomb! Let's go! All right, let's start with this one. We have Pocky Luxury Milk Chocolate. <laughs> Is it Pocky? You look like corn dog. What happened to you? It's got milk and fermented butter flavor. And we have another corn dog. It's an almond milk flavor. Oh, Mmm. It has strong almond milk flavor. I prefer this one, the milk chocolate, but both are so short. You should be longer. You too. We have this ultra thin pocky. Oh, <laughs> you're so thin this time. This one is short. This one is so thin. We have tasty. Why is it tasty? Oh, fermented butter is used for this stick. Ooh. It's got just a little bit of butter flavor. I still prefer this one, this corn dog. I'm on the crush. It's a little bit different. Look at the pockets. Yeah, obviously it's got almonds. Okie dokie pokie, itadakimasu. I love this. I love this. Mmm. We've got pocky chocolate coconut. Oh, this one is also this style of pockets. Oh. It's pretty similar with this one, Almond Crush. Hmm? Yeah, obviously it's got coconut flavor and also it's got a little bit of saltiness. It's not my case. Strawberry chocolate pocky. Oh! Ah. Right after you bite this, you get some sweetness, but after that you get sourness. It smells so strong. I can smell it from here. Cocoa powder pocky. And it says you can only get this in winter season. Oh yeah, look at this. It's got cocoa powder. Oishikore. Mm. We've got the cutest pocky ever. Cherry heart shaped pocky. Aha. Uh -huh. oh! Look at this! Heart is in there! How cute! And this part, cherry chocolate is so awesome. You get strong cherry flavor. We've also got blueberry heart-shaped chocolate pocky. Ooh, look at this! So blue. This color doesn't make me want to eat this. But let's try. Itadakimasu. Ooh! So sour. But look at this heart shaped pocky. Not for me. This is what I've been waiting for Sakura matcha. So, Sakura means cherry blossom. Cherry blossom matcha taste. Ooh. Look at this. 
So it's got matcha chocolate and this stick is pink. Mmm, this is so Japanese pokey. Just sweet matcha. The feeling of spring has come to my life. Spring is here in my body. And everybody's curious what these are. Megami no Ruby. Otona no kohaku. What does it mean? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it says Megami no Ruby. It means like goddess Ruby. Otona no kohaku. In English, it says amber. It's kind of like stone, fossil, jewel. It says it goes well with red wine. Interesting. Ta da! It looks like regular chocolate pocky. Oh, what is this? <laughs> this test itself is like berries. This one goes well with whiskey. Ah! It's pretty close to dark chocolate. It's bitter. In Japan, we have these gokuboso extra fine pocky, which are roughly half the thickness of a regular chocolate pocky. And in the US, ours are called the Ultra Slim. I got a new digital scale. What I'm gonna do is weigh a regular chocolate pocky, 2.13 grams. So ultra thin pocky. So it weighs 1.52 grams. Th thinner. That's it. Here's a big boy. Here's the thing. Is it, is it able to do this? Okay, like get out of the way so it's just the white background. 23, 24, 25, and there's another bag in here, so 50 per box. Okay, so 50 instead of 36. Seven regular pockies are 13 grams. Let's see how many slim ones we need to get to 13 grams. Five, six, seven, eight and a half. Eight and a half slim ones are the same as seven regular ones? Is that that much slimmer? I guess that's slimmer. Does anyone else think that like, that's like not significant enough to be a selling point? Pocky adjusts its sweetness for different countries. Not surprisingly, the US ones are meant to be sweeter. I'm gonna do a taste test side by side. We got the American ones, here's the Japanese one, and we're gonna see just how different they taste. I'm worried that these are also gonna be a, a Pocky popsicle. Oh no, okay. Japanese. These are the only Japanese ones I could find. Obviously they're bigger. I don't know if this is the norm. Mm. In the baseline sweetness. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah, it's noticeably different. They taste identical, but ours has like a sweet aftertaste. I like I like the Japanese ones much better. So Paki is in the Guinness World Records three times. It's the largest chocolate coated biscuits brand has the most mentions of a brand name on Twitter in 24 hours, which was 3,710,044 times. And finally, was part of the most people opening packaged food online simultaneously with 143 people. 143 people, that's it? That doesn't seem like that many. I feel like I've been on Zoom work calls with 143 people in it, right? It would have been literally one email to set that up. I can do. Kakebunshi no jutsu. Now I got more than 200 versus clones right here. Simultaneously. Three, two, one. Boom. Now I broke the Guinness World Records. So November 11th is known as a Poki no Hi or Poki Day in Japan. This date was chosen because a Poki is shaped like a one and November 11th visually looks like four pocky. And also, pretz are included in this day, November 11th, which is the pretzel version of pocky. And in Japan, you can get them in flavors like salad, ripe tomato, sweet potato, and roasted bread flavor. In the US, we also have pretz, and we get these fun flavors like sweet corn, bun, and pizza. Oh god. Nothing on it. Nope. I mean, yeah, it tastes like corn. Why though? What is the demand for corn flavored sticks? Uh, 
Besides pizza, anything flavored like pizza is terrible. Even pizza combos aren't very good. No. I mean, it's up there with like croutons. Does anyone grab a handful of croutons on the go? And we're just eating a box of croutons? Like these probably would be good on something. In Japan, our chocolate pocket box per 100 grams has 506 calories. Adjusted for the box size, 72 grams. The package contains 364.3 calories. And let's break it down even further to per pocky. One pocky contains on average 11.38 calories. A US chocolate pocky box contains 340 calories. Just a little bit less than a Japanese box, but note there is a two gram difference. Now, here at Food Wars, we thrive on scientific accuracy, so let's break it down per pocky. One US pocky is 9.44444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444
that was even bigger called the Team Gulp, which, again, according to them, was 128 fluid ounces for your team. Because who doesn't like to, after a softball game, go to 7-Eleven, get a Team Gulp and 10 straws? You know, just kick it with the, with the boys, right? Come on, team. Yeah, right, that's for one person. Don't be ridiculous. Here are many, many, many 7-Eleven items you can get in the US you can't get in Japan. And here are many of the 7-Eleven items exclusive to Japan. Japan puts the convenience in the convenience store. We call it konbini, which is the abbreviation of the convenience store, and it makes our life a lot easier. For example, office workers rely on stores like 7-Eleven for food and drink to keep them happy so that they can be productive at work. And for students, they tend to buy juices and snacks and hot foods and instant noodles, you know. And when I was a kid, I would often eat like hot foods and instant noodles with my friends and with my ex-girlfriends. 7-Eleven memories. Aishiteru Mada aishiteru. And for families, there is pretty much every daily essential they may need. And also, you can pay your bills, get ticket reservations for music and sports. 7-Eleven even has its own bank and ATMs. No matter where you go, especially in big cities like Tokyo, you can find more than one company on every block. Yeah, it's a bit different here in the US. I do frequent 7-Eleven and it's not bad, but the vibe is more kind of like, get the thing you need and go. Uh, the food is usually pretty hit or miss, usually miss in my experience. Uh, the hot food looks like it's been sitting out for a while, so I usually don't get it. Since there are way too many items exclusive to Japan for us to buy for one episode. So I've curated some of my favorites for you guys. This is still a ton of food. So here we have Japanese onigiris. This one is plum, tuna mayonnaise, shrimp and mayonnaise, mentaiko, which is spicy cod raw. I picked these onigiris from the back because onigiri in the back are fresh of all time. And let me show you how to open this one. Just put this over till here. Like this. So that you can have the dried, you know, seaweed. Itadakimasu. Mmm. A little bit sweet, a little bit of sour. So here is our sushi. Look at this, huge salmon sushi. Ah, gorgeous, gorgeous sushi. Itadakimasu. Oh my God, this is so delicious. Mmm. Oh, sushi. We got this long natto roll. Personally, I love natto, but even Japanese people, 50% of them, like it, 50% of them don't like it. This is an acquired taste. Aishiteru. So after this sticky and smelly nut roll, I've got sushi roll special package. So when it comes to this one, it's called Oinari-san. It has rice inside and the skin is like a sweet tofu skin. Mmm. Aume. Oinari-san, umai wa. This is so good. So like my grandma always cooked this for me and this makes me happy all the time. And next to Oinari-san, this like gorgeous sushi roll. It's like Japanese version of California roll. Itadakimasu! 1000% better than California roll. Kampyo maki. In English, it's like dried Gourd roll, itadakimasu. Perfect sushi roll. And last one, we have uh, pickles, radish pickles. It's quite yellow. It definitely has yellow number five. Itadakimasu. I'm gonna give them Grammy Award. I'm standing out vision. Uh, the hot food at the 7-Eleven in the US, we got a lot of options, not as many as Japan. I'm not quite sure what some of the stuff is just by looking at it. So let me go down the list. Nachos, they're the self-service nachos, so they have the chips ready to go and then you just open them up and 
add cheese and chili onto them. Ugh, no thank you. Over here, these mini tacos. Man, these are like really... Oh man, I've been sitting for a while, so I'm forgiven. We also have wings, crispy and not so crispy. Like a burrito, bean burrito guy. Over here in the roller taquito section, you can get a barbecue bacon cheeseburger roller, spicy garlic roller, regular taquito, Korean barbecue taquito. Also, we have chicken sandwiches, a black bean burger, glazed cheesy barbecue meatballs. Also at our 7-Elevens, you get a pepperoni pizza, cheese, or seven meats. And also for hot dogs, we got an exclusive hot picante dog. No. So here are our hot food sections. We've got steamed buns. It's got pork and bamboo shoots. And this is really standard, like nikuma. So next size up, we have the doubled nikuma. And next one, this little guy. What is this? Sweet beans steamed bun. And last steamed bun is pizza bun. You really are the pizza. Delicious. So all these things like um, around 100 yen to 200 yen or so. So if you're broke, you should definitely try this. We've got these ones. This one is called kare pan. So like deep fried curry bread. I want to eat it. I want to eat this. I want to eat this right now. Itadakimasu. Holy moly. Um, it's freaking delicious. And next one, crock it. So it's basically got um, potato and pork means. And last hot food we've got is corn dog. So this one right here is pretty Japanese one. It's got ketchup and a mustard, and you just squeeze this one onto this one. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. In Japan, we have these chicken options. First, I'm gonna start with this one, karage bowl. So in Japan, when you make Japanese fried chicken, you put some soy sauce on it. So it has soy sauce flavor and also garlic flavor. It's so freaking delicious. So this karage bowl, it's got uh, one, two, three, and four karages. We have fried chicken. Spicy fried chicken, chicken nuggets. Hot sandwich, the buffalo style chicken slider. The cheeseburger and the bacon cheeseburger. I mean, can you even tell which one's, right? Which one, huh? I'm assuming, obviously this burger's been cooked. More on this in the ingredients section. Uh, 7-Eleven in the US, and I think probably here in Southern California, has tacos and burritos. Get yourself a chicken fajita taco, El Pastor taco, that this one's good. And a chorizo breakfast taco. The spicy beef, bean and cheese burrito. This ain't any burrito, baby. It's the bomb. <laughs> Bombing out the toilet, good God. You're getting this and you're microwaving it there. So if you're, getting, you're like walking out to 7-Eleven, chomping on the bomb, like better make it home in time because oh man, it's coming. Empanadas, right? I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. And I close the lid like it's a coffin. Go away forever. All right, so here are my favorite bentos. Let's take a look at this one. It's called Nori Bento. This one is pretty popular one in Japan. So it's got croquet, a deep fried fish cake, fried fish with tartar sauce, kimpira gobo. It's like Japanese traditional salad pickles. And as you can see right here, it's got spicy cod roll. Under this seaweed, it's got rice and fish flakes. I love this bento. Like when I was a student, I think I would eat this every single day. So after my favorite one, this one, look at this. So this one is a Korean style beef bento. Oh man, it smells so good. Woo! Everything right here is so amazing, fantastic. This is so mashi soyo. 
tonkatsu bento. And it comes with this sauce for this tonkatsu. Look how thick it is. So outside from bentos, we have soba. Soba noodle. Put this sauce first. Put the wasabi and dried seaweed. And then you put water onto soba noodle. It's getting moist. And don't forget to put green onions right here. Itadakimasu. So you put soba noodle in this box. Ume! I guarantee you can't stop eating this because it's so delicious. Sorry, I still love the noodles because Japanese people or Asian people uh, do make noises when you eat uh, noodles. We slurp. Slurp! Slurp right now! They got the meals over there in Japan. We got meals too. Like this, ready-made ricotta, romano, parmesan cheese, stuffed ravioli, topped with marinara sauce, much well. Oh. Just stop, stop doing this. Stop, please. Stop. Oden. So then it's like Japanese traditional hot pot. It's got uh, fish cake, fried tofu, noodle thing. This is made from potato, egg, radish. In winter, when you eat this, this warms you up from your heart to your body. And next, gratin doria. So obviously it's got meat sauce and a lot of cheese. Under this cheese, it's got a lot of rice in there. It's like Japanese Western food. We have seven premium main dishes, naan and butter chicken curry. And next we have seven premium side dishes, mackerel, grilled mackerel. We also have mackerel in miso. Saba miso is smoked tongue. In Japan, it's a pretty popular item. Especially when you go to like a Japanese barbecue restaurant, we order the like beef tongue or pig tongue. So this one used to be like this. Smells so good, so fancy. It's marvelous. So after this sexy tongue, we have sexy fish cake. And look at this bar. It's a chicken bar. So it's like a chicken nugget before it's fried. Octopus and wasabi. This is just raw octopus. Kimpira gobo. It's a sauteed bird dog. Hijiki ni, stewed hijiki seaweed. And potato salad. So like when I go home, my mom always cooks like this one, this one, this one. I love you, mom. I miss mom's cooking. And next we have premium gold main dishes. Shrimp with chili sauce. Beef stew. Hamburg steak. Sandwiches, 7-Eleven. Egg salad, peanut butter and jelly, turkey and cheddar cheese on a Kaiser roll. So we have the Italian style sub, but then we also got the Italian job. Turkey and ham with, is that cheese in the picture there? We got the smoked turkey and Monterey Jack cheese sandwich and they separated the lettuce. So you add it like right before you're ready to eat so it's still nice and crisp. Salads, chicken Caesar salad. We also have a pepperoni pasta salad. So here are my favorite sandwiches. It's got tuna right here and a cheese and lettuce. And the rest of these are ham and egg. I thought this is normal, but you don't have this one. Fruit sandwich. So it's got a whole bunch of fruits. It's got peach, pineapples, and oranges, uh, whipped cream. So it's like cake. So here is seven premium drip coffee. So I'm gonna make myself a cup of coffee. And it just sits on here. Mmm. Alright. Itadakimasu. It tastes like shit. So for breakfast sandwiches at 7-Eleven, you can get yourself a croissant with ham, egg, and cheese. Ooh, an English muffin with bacon, egg, and cheese. We also have English muffins with sausage, egg, and cheese, sausage biscuits, and sausage, egg, and cheese croissants. The 7-Eleven signature brand also has mini donuts, chocolate, cinnamon, crunch, and of course, powdered madelines. 7-Eleven has cookies right at the register for a dollar. You can get yourself some macadamia nut cookies, oatmeal raisin, sugar, but there's also a chocolate chip cookie one. Uh, baked goods, you get yourself some muffins. There's a blueberry muffin, coffee cake, Crispy rice treat bar. No, since they rice crispy, because you know that's copywritten. Walnut fudge brownie, bear claw Danish, iced honey bun, cheese Danish, 
Mixed berry danish, glazed honey bun. Look at these pre-packaged, it says flavored snack pie. It's a weird way of putting it. Lemon, key lime, banana cream. I feel like they used the same. That's the same edge, Photoshop right there, buddy. Boston cream, apple, and the last one, strawberry cheesecake. Key lime. Oh, cream there. It's key limey. Oh yeah, oatmeal. That's obviously maple syrup right there. But the first thing I did when I looked at it, I was like, wait, does it have brandy in it? Who's the oatmeal? You can put hot water in here, Joe, or hot milk, Yuli, or hot whiskey. Your boss won't notice the difference. Oh, well, at first. <laughs> here we have Japanese type of bread. Stir fried noodles and sauce bread. We call it yakisoba pan. Now you may be thinking, what the is this? So it's like hot dog, but instead of sausage, we got stir fried noodle inside. Carb, carb. It makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? So kids love this noodle and bread. Itadakimasu. Mmm. This one reminds me of my childhood. Me playing tags in the mountain and chasing the girls. Now a lot of girls chasing. This is a crab bread. It's got two crab shaped bread. Now the question is, does it taste like crab? It doesn't taste like crab. It tastes like just bread. Pink bread. It's a cherry blossom flavored called pink bread. This pink stuff is it's pretty sour. It tastes like cherry blossom and like my first kiss. This is the salty, savory snack zone. Ah, so much stuff. And I've hit the Food Wars wall. Hot and spicy crackling curls, the original, and the fried pork rinds. Chili lime. I'm not tasting anything pork related to it. Little pig guy there. Little piggy guy. You're on the menu, buddy. Next, Seven Selects has their own veggie straws. Mm. This will be the trail mix and mix like section. We got these uh, cheese pizza flavored snack mix. Damn, we stinky boy if you have a bunch of these. Yeah, we got the spicy ranch flavor mix. And this last one, just sesame sticks. For those of you who like to uh, get your trail mix or your checks mix and then unmix them and organize them and eat them like that, 7 Eleven has got a snack for you. Oh, this is kind of a party snack mix. Yeah. This is what I would totally get yogurt, yogurt pretzels. I like put yogurt on there, like you're thinking, oh, yogurt, that's healthy, right? I mean, it's just, it's the same as icing. Now you're looking at this going, Jack Link's beef jerky? That's not a 7-Eleven brand. No, it's not. But as you can see, exclusive 7-Eleven flavors. See, this was like, hey, Jack Link's, guess what? We're about to push you out on the sh on our shelf space. So do a deal with us or you're gone completely. And Jack Link's was like, no, I got kids to feed, please. Brown sugar bourbon. Original recipe. Original. Hickory smoked bacon. Like snacking on cheese and nothing else? Full house, baby. This one is mozzarella cheese wrapped in hard salami. Pepper jack stick, Gouda cheese to go. Oh, the big one, the big cheese, the white cheddar. This ain't your grandma's cheese. It's the big one. Just two. <laughs> cheddar cheese, Colby Jack, which is like camouflage cheese. Uh, pretzels, mini twist, non-yogurted pretzel nuggets. Ooh, gross, these ones have peanut butter inside of them. Pretzel sticks. I feel like there was a while there in the early 90s when they were like, chips are bad for you, eat pretzels instead. And these are really salty too. A serving size of these is three. I would get this assuming I'm gonna sit and eat this whole bag in one sitting. I'm not gonna do three at a time. The whole bag is 1160 milligrams, 50% of your sodium intake. Mini rice cakes. Chips. 7-Eleven has a bunch of their own potato chips, including the original fiery hot kettle chips, which are way better than regular chips. Again, spicy jalapeno, smoked gouda, ooh, gouda. Barbecue, salt and pepper. Ruffles ripoffs. We got cheddar and sour cream, prime rib, I'm trying these, and buffalo chicken dip. Prime rib? Ooh, smells terrible. Oh my God, it smells so bad. It's definitely not this. I have more like ground beef. Instead of one of these like fancy forks, it'd be like a the plastic spork that they have at 7-Eleven. They're opening the bag with the spork, meat's pouring out of it it's on the floor of a 7-Eleven with a guy mopping around it. <laughs> Nuts, baby. Nuts. The Rise and Shine fiber blend of a trail mix, whatever. Antioxidants. Yeah, right. Revive and thrive. Anti another antioxidant mix. Should've just, should've just handed these out during COVID. 
would have bounced back in a week. Cashew halves. You like your nuts halved? Booyah. You like, you like your nuts hold? Booyah. Doesn't matter if they're whole or not. That, would that affect the flavor at all? Who cares? Spicy ranch. Pistachios. And of course, jumbo flavored wasabi and soy nuts. Nope. Wasabi will never touch my lips again after that, after that video. So here are my favorites instant noodles. Let's start. Ippudo ramen. Man, I love this. So it's got some pockets. Dried pork. It's a miso for the ramen soup. Dried veggies. And it's got noodles. All right. And you gotta wait for three minutes. So while I'm waiting for this, I'm gonna go this one. So it's called ippe chan. So it basically is a yakisoba. Yakisoba is like a Japanese stir fried noodles. So you put some hot water onto this line. All right, so it's been three minutes. Put this soup into this bowl, mix it. Smells so good. <laughs> Bravo! So Ippudo has a lot of locations in Japan, including Tokyo, but this taste, this flavor is totally the same as the restaurants serving, so just get it at 7-Eleven. Oh, s**t! I totally forget the... Oh. So I put some hot water, but... Oh, s**t! I should have thrown the water away into the toilet. Noodles. Let's make yakisoba. <laughs> the volume of these noodles gets a lot bigger. Okay, so put yakisoba sauce and flakes. And most importantly, mayo. Mayo beam! And mix it up. Ta da! So this is yakisoba. Like we usually eat this like at like summer festival. <laughs> Pretty good as always. Next we have takomeshi. Look at this. So it's got uh, green onions, and I believe this is taco. So three minutes again. Look at this final noodle. It says ultra spicy final. You're gonna be crying because of the spiciness. It's too spicy. But uh, I'm gonna try this only for a shooting purpose. This is for you guys. We can do it. Oh man, I'm so scared. <sighs> All right, so I think it's time to eat this one. So I'm gonna throw the water away in the toilet again. Let's go to the toilet. And put yakisoba sauce. Alrighty. And the taste itself is lighter than this one. I prefer this one, but, but this is the king ramen. All right, so finally, let's make the freaking spicy noodle. I call it death sauce. In case I'm dead, please find another Japanese host. It was nice to meet you, Foot Insider. Go! Oh man, look at this. It's not red, it's blood. How do I need this? <coughs> ah! Oh. We can do it. This is for you guys. <laughs> I'm not joking, I'm not joking. Please find another <laughs> Japanese <laughs> It hurts. Ah. Am I alive? Am I not dead? Am I in heaven? Hell? I feel like I'm in hell. <laughs> It's not all junk food at the 7-Eleven, Joe and Yuli. They also have delicious, freshly sliced fruit. Pre-packaged and everything. Came straight from the ground, and it comes in a container that will be here 
until the sun explodes. This, I mean, this has to be an LA thing. You can get mango with tahini, tahini. seasoning. Fantastic combination. Finally, grape cup. 7-Eleven also has his own brand of packaged candies. Sour gummy bears, sour neon gummy worms, sour watermelon wedges, green apple rings, gummy worms for catching, gummy fish, <laughs> you like that? Fruit leather, whatever we call this. Chili mango, hell yeah, I'm trying these. Sweetened mango and a sweetened fruit medley. Not bad. Oh, a little spicy than I thought. Whoa. It's also gummy bears and gummy sharks. It's also gummy peach rings. They got jelly beans and they got sour cherries. 7-Eleven Selects in the US also has their own line of sandwich cookies, vanilla, pumpkin spice, double chocolates, peppermint, s'mores, the duplexes, lemon cream. Mm -hmm. So here are Japanese sweets. Pink rice cake with red bean paste. So basically, uh, it's like cherry blossom mochi. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. I want to eat this under the tree of cherry blossom. Cherry blossom. Gochisousama deshita. Oishikatta desu. Next we have ninja gumi. It's like ninja sawarime. So it's a hard gumi. It's really tough. Like stones. Toppo. <clears throat> it's like pocky. But like the chocolate is inside. I'm loving it. Look at this cute guy. Koala no Machi. Koala's March chocolate. My favorite will be this one. When I was a kid, I would eat this every single day. And this taste is so nostalgic. Uh, little George is calling me like, Hey, I want to eat this. I want to eat this. Hey, are you filming right now? Later. After shooting, okay? Okay. Okay. We're good. Pretty. Please prepare the plate and then just do like this. One, two, three, go. The shape is like cherry blossom. Look how jelly it is. Mm. This is the best pudding ever. We had to go on a run to get more stuff. That's why visually this all doesn't connect. <laughs> Stefan Lum's got macaroons, French macaroons. Ooh, mini cheesecakes. New York style and strawberry swirl. These I can get behind. Our 7-Eleven in the US has ice cream, such as banana cream pie, caramel butter pecan, chocolate covered strawberry, double cookie dough, cookies and cream, sea salt caramel, strawberry banana shortcake. So let's start with cold stuff. We've got fried dumplings. It's frozen. Frozen takoyaki, frozen fried rice. So after these frozen meals, I got ice cream. Chokomonaka jumbo. So chokomonaka jumbo is like Japanese ice cream sandwich. Inside, ah! Let me bite. Itadakimasu. Sorry, it looks gross. <laughs> so it's got ice cream and it's got chocolate in the middle and uh, this crunchy on the outside. Every Japanese people get this one, at least once in, in their life. And last ice cream, I got this one. Gorilla chocolate ice cream. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Ah. 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 Sorry. Itadakimasu. This is delicious. Not only me, but Gorilla would really love this. A lot of exclusive drinks. Uh, I don't know really where to begin, so I kind of lined them up by perception of healthiness. <laughs> So all the way down on this end, we've got 7-Eleven Select Go Smart Cold Organic Pressed Juices. This one's the Tropical Glow, and this gross looking one is of course clean and green. Uh, after that, we got these pre-packaged juices. These are the 7 Select Farmer's Grove. Cranberry cocktail, raspberry lemonade, orange juice of course, regular lemonade. Then next up in the bigger ones, we have the 7-Eleven Teas. Peach black tea, sweet tea. They weren't kidding, man. Look at that. Lemon sweet tea and green tea. Fruit punch, mango, guava, energy. Come on. Herbal tonic. Herbal. This is herbal, guys. Yeah. 7 Eleven also has their own brand of 
Are these sort of energy drinks? The Gatorades and Powerades and the like. Replenish, and of course replenish zero, I'm assuming zero added sugar. Orange mango, fruit punch, lemonade. The cherry is clear. What? Why is cherry clear? Guava splash, orange mango. These are bad. 7-Eleven energy. Strawberry lemonade, energy shot. Uh, one and a half times the caffeine of a cup of coffee. Oh, good God. Undrinkable. How bad is that the taste where this is too, I can get to this. You've seen the show, right? You'll see what I'll tolerate. This, I can barely tolerate this. Here's something that they don't have in Japan. They don't have Slurpees. That's nuts, right? Slurpees are, how do you describe a Slurpee? It's like a flavored slush. Uh, we have endless Slurpee flavors. The ones currently you can get here in America are blue rocket berry, blood orange, Vitamin Water XXX, Blue Raspberry, Blueberry Lemonade Bliss, Cherry, Coca-Cola, Mountain Dew Citrus, Peach Perfect, Pina Colada, and Pineapple Whip. So here are Japanese exclusive drinks. We have vegetable juice, of course. Mmm! Oishi. A lot of Japanese salarymen drink this one every morning to get their day started. So this one is for Joe. Joe. You're missing a lot of veggies, so you should drink this one. Oi Ocha, my favorite green tea. And these two are hot drinks, black coffee and coffee latte. And this is our first time filming this. We have alcohol. We have seven premium beer. And this one is not beer. It's like Sprite with alcohol. It contains 9% of alcohol. It's pretty. Delicious, but at the same time, it's pretty dangerous. Japanese sake. When you come to Japan, you can see a lot of people drinking alcohol outside. They were like... They're not dead. They're just sleeping. They're drunk. Whiskey. 7-Eleven in the US has its own private brand wines. Yosemite Road, Trojan Horse, Plot and Point, and Voyager Point. It also has its own canned wine brand called Romer. Perhaps the reason 7-Eleven has such a wide variety of products in Japan is that it's everywhere in Japan. There are 21,215 stores in Japan. That's crazy! Which is nearly 30% of all the 7-Elevens in the world. Of course, all 37 prefectures have a 7-Eleven and out of all of them, the city of Tokyo has the most locations with 2,850. To put that in perspective, the U.S. has 9,417 7-Elevens, and there's no 7-Elevens in 18 states. As far as states, California has the most, 1,823. But as far as denseness in area, Las Vegas, Nevada has the most, with 158. In Japan, our hot dog is 290 calories and 720 milligrams of sodium, which is 31.3% of your daily allowance. Our hot dog is 180 calories. Ooh, how about this? Our hot dog is 180 calories, but for the frank only. The stats, for some reason, don't say anything about the bun, but this isn't much better for you. It's 570 milligrams of sodium, so around 24.8% of your daily allowance. Japan's hand-rolled tuna and mayo onigiri has 258 calories and is very filling. Remember this guy, the tuna sandwich. Here in the US, ours is 420 calories and lots of sodium, over 800 milligrams. And in the US, a super big gulp of Coca-Cola, this isn't Coca-Cola, is 44 fluid ounces, it's 513 calories and 143 grams of carbs. It's over half your daily intake. In Japan, 7-Eleven does not disclose the ingredients list of its freshly made food items. It does, however, tell us the country of origin for the raw materials for certain items like the fried food, yakitori, oden, and Chinese steamed buns. The chicken for our fried chicken is from Thailand. The pork for our sausages and hot dogs comes from USA, Canada, and Japan. The wheat for the buns comes from Canada, the USA, and Japan and azuki beans come from Canada, cheese comes from New Zealand, and the shrimp for the shrimp chili buns is from Vietnam. This is the pepperoni of the pizza in the US, and it contains all this junk. I mean, what's this thing? 
Never heard of that. What about chicken strips? It's got all this stuff. Just like mom used to make. And of course, the 7-Eleven Select Cheeseburger, which contains <sighs> sesame seed bun has enriched flour, excuse me, enriched wheat flour, wheat flour, niacin, sorbitin, iron, monoceratidate, seratidate, calcium, proponi, ate as a preservative, calcium oil, sulfate, beef, patty, wheat, scat, smoke, flavor, added, and it's beef, encapsulated salt. It's Anything else after that? Salt, spice, yeah, rice, pasteurized processed uh, American cheese. cheese col they're sitting down. That's how long this is going. My camera person so just sat down. Uh, a preservative, geez. paprika, and anetto color. So I guess the last takeaway from this video is that in the U.S., some of our 7-Eleven items can be a little bit of a gamble with your health. Speaking of gambling, you know your boy got some scratchers when he was over at 7-Eleven. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's the winning numbers. Okay, so we didn't win anything on that one. I have no clue how to, how to do this. Did I win? If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now. Because we are filming this for six hours.